Hello ladies and gentlemen, Top Hat Gaming Man here and today I have decided to cover the subject yet again of retro game collecting, yeah! And whether or not collecting is even worse than ever before as um, the area of entertainment appears to be having a snowball effect and the bigger the snowball gets and rolls down the hill the more ridiculous it's becoming, yes! So, this weekend I went to the Blackpool Play Expo. Uh, for those who do not know, that's actually um, a gaming convention up in the north of England. And overall, I suppose I had a fantastic weekend. It was jolly good fun, and um, today I'd like to tell you all about it. But first, um, amongst all of this, we're going to um, tackle the subject of game collecting amongst all of this. Um, at this convention there was um, a variety of stalls and like, a ridiculously huge abundance of games. And I'm someone who doesn't manage to get to conventions very often, I must say. I'm just a very busy man, so I've got a lot in my schedule. However, I made the effort to get to this one and, um, like the cliché and the stereotype goes, the games for sale at this place were um, basically on sale at absolutely astronomical prices like you honestly wouldn't believe some of the prices uh, these games were attempting to be being sold at it was literally outrageous like I was I went into this thing knowing they would be expensive but I had no idea how much the sellers would be trying to command on these objects like for example I remember seeing multiple game cubes for sale and when I say game cubes these wasn't game cubes in their box literally just the console with the wires and the controller and the sellers were attempting to get 80 pounds per game cube um, with each one as far as I'm aware unless the prices have gone up drastically in the last year or two a loose game cube would go for 20 pounds maximum and that's if you was really lucky I remember I was remember trying to shift game cubes a little while ago and couldn't even get 10 pounds for them because who would want a GameCube when you just get a Wii anywhere and then you play Wii games and GameCube games on the unit? So yes, ridiculously expensive GameCubes. In fact, every single game I could find for sale, well, the majority of them, because I didn't obviously check every game on eBay, they were attempting to sell above the highest buy now listings. So it wasn't um, just above the highest sold listings they was attempting to sell for. They was literally trying to sell the games above the highest buy now listing which I just find ridiculous. Um, I think I spent about six or seven hours at the event and when I first arrived at the event and when I left the event later that evening I remember most of the exact same game still being for sale. So despite the fact that they got literally thousands of, of people through the door like this place was literally packed out people wasn't buying these games because the pricing was just too unfair. However, maybe that's why the games were priced so unfairly. Maybe they just hoped that there'd be one idiot who's stupid enough to buy a game for double its value, or maybe even 10 people who are stupid enough to buy a game for double its value, because maybe then someone like me wouldn't even notice the games that are gone. So maybe that's the, the method there in which they are selling to. But for someone like me who's got three bloody rooms full of games, I just found the prices rather insulting. Like. I'm a man who normally walks around with um, a decent sum of money in his pocket who's ready to splash out whenever he sees something he would like to procure. And there was literally games everywhere, looking around, seeing games and consoles. Oh, I quite like that, quite like that, quite like that. Price... Oh, no. Why, why, would, why would I want that? That doesn't make sense. Um, I've got my phone here and I can just click this button and have the item sent to my house um, with a guarantee that if it doesn't work then I can send it back via eBay and it's cheaper. I'm not going to bloody hand over my physical cash to somebody who's essentially charging me more and there's no overheads they've got to pay, including like postage, PayPal fees, eBay fees. All they're paying is their bloody petrol to get to the destination and the bloody cost of um, setting up their stool in the first place. So why would I want to buy from them when I can just buy from another seller at a cheaper cost and then there's more in it for me? as well like couldn't really get my head around that like I remember one actually is one was quite funny I remember seeing a copy of Parodius at the event for sale which I believe to have been 80 pounds 80 pounds I think they wanted for Parodius and um, on the, the listings on eBay it looked like they'd recently sold for 50 pounds so obviously I've got no reason to buy Parodius for them for 
80 pounds when I could just wait for a 50 pound one to come up on eBay again. Went into CEX this morning, bought a copy of Herodias for 38 pounds. Do you know what I mean? You know you've got bloody issues when bloody CEX can sell games cheaper than yourselves. So, for everyone watching today, can anyone explain to me what's the benefit of me buying from a convention? What's the benefit of anyone buying from a convention? Surely people who go to conventions are in the know. They have a good idea about gaming. So trying to sell games to them at top dollar, surely that's just not going to happen. And I got to circulate this venue time and time and time and time again. And I pretty much came home with jack squat of one game. And um, I didn't spend very much on that, so just, just one game, and that was a cheap one. It wasn't a high-end one, where if their high-end games had have been priced a little bit fair, then maybe I would have bought a few, but sadly I only spent £35 in there, and I could have spent more. So yes, games in abundance. So if you like to see things, go to these conventions, because you'll see a ridiculous amount of games for sale, but you just won't want to buy them. However, now let's get on to... Um, the nicer sides of this expo, I suppose. There's a ridiculous amount of arcade cabinets everywhere. Like, there's a plethora. Like, you're t talking about stuff from the 80s all the way through to the late 90s. You've got a ridiculous amount of arcade cabinets. So I had a lot of fun playing on a variety of these. I suppose the only downside with this, again, the event was absolutely packed out. So if you wanted to play something, I suppose, um, in demand, like a 90s Sega cabinet, um, you would have had to queue a little bit to potentially get onto those. So some of the units were really in demand. I didn't actually get to experience that day. However, that's probably because I've experienced them elsewhere before where I've not had to queue. So, uh, didn't want to do that. Also, some of the customers did smell a little bit wrong. Like, know that horrible smell you get when you walk into CEX or game, and most of the customers just don't smell right. You had that smell in the air a lot of the time. Like, what's that about gamers? Why don't gamers wash as much as normal people? Can't put my finger on that one either. Like, talk about adding to a stereotype. Do you know what I mean? It's like, why do people associate nerds with smelling bad? and? That should not actually be true. Don't think I like that one, but overall, lots of nice people as well, yes. Lots of nice people around the event, despite the overall atmosphere smelling bad. But I can't say I smelt anyone on an individual basis, I must say. So yes, lots of nice people. Got to meet actually lots of you. Lots of you introduced, me, uh, introduced yourself to myself at the event, what was cool. So I got to put some faces um, to my viewership. I remember meeting um, one particular man who must have been about six foot bloody seven and looked like Andre the Giant. He went, Oh, Top Hat Gaming Man, I'm a massive fan. I went, Oh, and you're a massive man. And he was, Oh, yes, I am. So, yes, it was cool to meet some of my biggest fans. That was truly awesome. Speaking of people, I also got to meet um, a plethora of YouTubers in which I've been in contact with in the past. YouTubers have actually collaborated with myself on my channel and their own channels as well and I've actually finally got to meet them in person. Got to meet Kim Justice and she was absolutely fantastic. Really, really, really nice person. I got to meet um, Daniel Iberson finally and we've been back and forth on loads of things over the last two years. Again, uh, absolutely fantastic man, fantastic content. So make sure you subscribe to both of those. Got to meet Octavius Kitten for the first time as well. She's been in my uh, Sega Dreamcast documentary. So yeah, I got to meet her too. Um, and also a plethora of uh, smaller YouTubers too. Like, got to meet Nova Bug, The Back Office, all sorts of people. Actually, Retro Man came was there as well that's another uh, fantastic channel what's on the rise in fact hopefully we are doing um, some collaboration work in person later this week so it'd be good to work with retro man cave also yes miles powers as well who has like a, a sort of scientific channel as well he showed up at the event which was cool so yes miles powers if you want to check out his content he made um, a really um, amusing video actually about how um, pokemon and alakazam plagiarised Yuri Geller, so um, Yuri, Geller, Yuri Geller obviously tried to sue Nintendo because uh, Yuri Geller is obviously a spoon-bending twat as well, so he thought Alakazam was plagiarising his work, and I believe that um, court case is still going on to this day, so yes, YouTubers, um, arcade cabinets, um, overpriced games, um, what more can you want? Actually, apart from the arcades, there was loads of actually consoles set up 
on CRT uh, televisions as well, which was fun. In fact, there was a lot of those set up, and there was there was so many set up. I even got to play on consoles I don't bloody own, which was awesome because I own a lot of consoles. Like I got to play um, the Philips Video Pack for the first time, um, known as um, the Odyssey, the Magnavox Odyssey 2 in some regions. That was a decent little console. The Grandstand as well. Never played in the Grandstand until yesterday. Had fun with one of those, so I would like to procure a Grandstand at some point soon. And got to play on a PC engine as well which is probably perhaps the console I want more than any at this moment in time we're talking mainstream stuff still haven't got a PC engine so it was great playing with one of those uh, so yes overall a fantastically fun weekend there was panels going on the whole time as well so um, you got to um, go to panels and watch um, game old game developers from the 1980s talk about their works I think there was a presentation on the spectrum next um, Mr. Bifo done a presentation on digitizer so there was a range of different panels you could go see however because I had to go for such a short time because um, I was working with that bloody soy boy Luke Street and he had work today and we had to do a twitch stream back in Essex um, last night as well we had to rush off pretty quick so I only got to spend six hours there overall however it was a six hours which was certainly worth the time so overall if you fancy visiting um, a play expo near you then I would recommend the experience who knows you might even get to say hello to me at the next one because um, I intend to visit these um, quite regularly however unless things change it's not really worth buying games from them because um, the prices were um, insulting I suppose to say the least can't really see any incentives to procure those games so if anyone can let me know in the comment section why I perhaps would want to buy games at such a high premium from conventions then please let me know in the comment section am I missing a trick with all of this let me know yeah Cheerio!